The implications of God are in the hierarchy of things, including us, and in the imperfection even of the highest things that we see. Why would a, a place devoted to learning, to the exercise of the mind, to rational understanding, also be interested in faith? Aren't they contradictory? And uh, that I will address at a little bit of length because that would be why we study Genesis here. Philosophy is the love of wisdom. And wisdom is an achievement of the intellect, of what you can know by thinking things through. We kind of start with the things in front of us and try to understand how we know what they are. Same thing, one of the things in front of us is each other, ourselves. What are we? And so you start with questions. Socratic philosophy begins this way with, what are we? How should we live? What are these other things we see and how do we know what they are? How do we figure it out? And there's a great account of that in classical philosophy. And classical philosophy, of course, was born in a time before the Christian faith, in pagan times, 400, or so years before Christ. And their account runs like this. They say, well, you know, when you th start thinking about how you recognize things, you're asking the question, how do you use common nouns? Um, down there, there's a glass, which they put here for me in case I get raspy. And uh, I'll hold it up so you can see it. And if you think about it, that's one glass. It's a kind, there are many kinds, many, many kinds. And somehow we always recognize them. And the fact that we can use the common noun glass is the central op operation according to the classics of human reason. It's the thing we can do that the other creatures can't do. And yet when we realize that about ourselves and look inside ourselves, we see that whatever it is about us that makes us different, that thing too is imperfect. First of all, it's located in a perishable body. And second of all, we have this uh, thing that is about us, about the way we learn and the way we think. That's the reason why uh, students get dark circles under their eyes at finals time. We go from one thing to the next thing to the next thing and we have to piece them together while we go. We don't know everything at once. We can't really see anything except what we can see. Aristotle says there's uh, nothing in the soul that doesn't get there through the senses. So that's a kind of a limit. Well, once you see what those problems are, you can imagine a being that knows everything in an instant, sees everything in an instant. The implications of God are in the hierarchy of things, including us, and in the imperfection even of the highest things that we see. And that means that the humanities raise the question of God. And so you need to be thinking about that. But then think about this, how are you going to know about God? Because if you imagine a perfect being, it would be omnipotent. That means it could do anything. And then on the other hand, to be omnipotent, it would need to be omniscient. It would need to know everything. And if it was the origin of things, it would be the creator. Now, I will tell you that in Greek philosophy, they don't imagine a creator because they stick with what they see and they see that the planets are always there and they always move in the patterns they move and grown-up dogs give rise to baby dogs and acorns produce oak trees and so the implication is that it's gone on forever. But on the other hand, they did ask the question, you know, did all this start somewhere? And if so, where? And if there actually was a creator, then he would actually have to be outside nature. He wouldn't be just that dense lump at the beginning of things. He'd have to be something outside that thing to be the source of it. And he would need to be an eternal thing, a thing that didn't start, in order to be perfect, I'm saying. And so then you start drawing a picture of God. And that picture is supported by the traditions of learning that come to us, especially through Judaism and Christianity. Uh, in Christianity, Jesus is the Word. That's what God has to say, just like we say, use words, and only we use them. And so there's an invitation in the faith to think and try to explain. 
understanding that we're unlikely to be able to explain everything at once, including especially the thing of which we could have no sensory evidence, the creator of everything. And that's why in the tradition, uh, the study of God, theology, has always been part of the canon of the liberal arts and fits in the canon, understanding that it's that the faithful part of it, the revealed part of it, that that part is a different kind of knowing than the kind that we undertake when we observe and think and record and calculate and in the natural sciences experiment. And it doesn't mean that they're not both valuable, but they are different. And so to call yourself a wholly thoughtful people as far as a human being could be, person, wholly thoughtful person, you'd have to do some thinking about God. Thank you for watching. We hope you're enjoying our highlight series and invite you to explore all of Hillsdale College's online courses. They are free and for everyone who loves to learn.